I miss you. Love, mommy. C'est pas vrai. Bye, mommy. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is an open discussion with T3 Films. My name is Chris, and this is... Cheryl. And today, we're going to be talking about the film Nanny. It is on Amazon Prime. came out a couple of years ago, and we hadn't seen it up until this point, so we're going to talk about it. And just so you guys know, we are going to be going into spoiler territory, and we think that if you haven't seen the movie, it'd be worth it to go and see it and then come back and hear what we had to say about it. But let's go ahead and jump right into this film. So... I didn't know what the movie was going to be about. Uh, I was saying on our Twitch channel that I didn't... This is a, was requested to us, or this was suggested to us by one of our viewers. And I hadn't heard about this film. I hadn't seen a trailer. So I went into this completely blind, not knowing anything about it. And I was, I was surprised because the, the movie has... So we already said spoilers. The movie is technically a horror film, and I hadn't. And it's weird because it like kind of builds into a horror film because it doesn't just immediately start off like you just. Well, the first shot is kind of horrific, and it makes you ask like, "What am I looking at?" But then after that, it feels like kind of just almost like that um, that show. Well, a show that I watched about like a woman just trying to work in people's houses and make some money so that she can take care of her kid. Like it's it's that it's that simple what her goals and her dreams are, and it takes place. At first, I wasn't sure where it took place, but you find out that it takes place in America and specifically in New York. And the lead character she ends up working for this family and helping them around the house as a nanny. They have a kid, and the kid um, is suggested to be kind of a problem child when we first meet the kid or we meet the parent talking about the kid, but when um, the lead character, when she is working with this kid, it actually seems like everything's fine. The kid is kind of an angel to the point where the parents are kind of like, what are you doing? How are you, how are you getting our kid to eat? Our kid normally doesn't eat like that. And, oh, she's an angel. Who like, are you talking about somebody else's kid? And so, and you, you see that she, she also has, she has a son and her son, I'm, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Cheryl, but I believe her son is in Senegal and they're trying to bring him over from Senegal. And so she's talking with her son via um, online, on the phone and stuff like that, promising to bring him out, telling him to behave and stuff like that. And everything that she is doing throughout the film or everything she's doing up until this point is all about making enough money to make sure that she can buy tickets for her son and the, the guardian that's watching him to come to America to be with her. So that's the simple like premise of the film. And then it starts to get kind of wild as you keep going but before i talk too much more about it um what are your thoughts cheryl yeah i mean it's funny when you when you're explaining it it doesn't really sound incredibly interesting Mm -hmm. but it was so interesting even though like i feel like watching the show it seemed almost as if i was watching nothing happening Okay, so I was going to say that too. Like, there's a lot of nothing, almost feeling like there's nothing happening in this movie for like 40 minutes. Yeah. There's like nothing happening, but it's it still was, interesting. Yeah, it was so interesting. Um, it was pretty um, captivating. Like, I I didn't feel bored. And you know how I usually, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. these kinds of, like the way you're describing it, and even just by looking at it, it would seem like the kind of movie that I would not enjoy that I would not want to watch that I would be disinterested or bored with because it's just a whole lot of you know day to day nothing's really happening I think the most conflict there is is that she's not getting paid on time and she's getting Mm -hmm. angry about it um and you know she meets uh a guy the the door not the not the door bell the bellhop, he's like the, bellhop he's not doorman. Even the bellhop, he's like the receptionist, sort of. The receptionist, yeah, yeah. Um, and then Malik they kind is his of, name. Malik, yeah. And then they have um, a relationship. Uh, they develop a relationship together. Uh, you hear a little bit about her story, how she had her son. Um, and I guess, you know you can kind of say that this is a character film. I was just sort of waiting for something to happen. I thought 
that the the mom, um, what's her name, like Anna Aisha? No, no. Oh, uh, oh, Michelle Mo- uh, Monaghan. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, we were talking about um, uh, Mission Impossible the last time on the last show. Yeah. And then I saw we saw her in this movie, so that was kind of fun. But yes, Amy. Amy is the mom's Amy. name. Amy. Yeah. So, she, like, I thought she was gonna crack or something, or her husband is gonna. I think his name is Adam. And Mm -hmm. I thought, like, the two of them were going to do something and or even, you know, the child, Rose. It's always the child, right? But it's actually none of that. All the horror things happen in her dreams or she is hallucinating. um, And those are the scary parts. And I guess, like, those parts weren't even the things that were interesting me. I was super confused because I was just wondering what she was having nightmares about. And then you have the big reveal at the end, of course, um, which I guess we can uh, get into. We'll talk to you in a, in a, oh, we'll talk about it in a second, yeah, because I kind of want to piggyback off of that, what you just said about all the stuff taking place in her mind. Um, because at one point in the movie, because essentially, like, when we break down what this film is, in the long or what actually happens in this movie even like we said like nothing really happens for the first 40 minutes but when you really kind of break it down it's kind of actually like a lot of nothing happening the whole movie is basically nothing happening and then she finds out some information at the end of the film and then the film ends so like that's essentially what happens in like the reality of that world but as far as like coming to things that we see that's happening inside of her mind like you were suggesting like you were saying I remember thinking to myself, are they trying to imply that she's schizophrenic? Because there's these other, there's like these little crumbs that are spread throughout the film that make you wonder because when she meets um, uh, Malik, he talks about how his mom was schizophrenic and he had to take care of her. And I was like, okay, that seems like that's important. And then, and even when she has like a kind of episode around him, he kind of knows how to calm her down. Um, and then there's another part where she's sitting on these on this bench with other nannies and they're talking about how one of the nannies that they knew kind of went crazy and slit one of the children's throats um, as she's sitting there and seeing this image of her son like um, behind the water. And so I was like, and I was asking myself, is the movie trying to convince me that she is going to, because they they also said that the woman that did this thing she was the kind of sick that you can't see um so i was like okay this feels very deliberate so i feel like the movie is trying to build her up as being kind of schizophrenic and then of course as we keep going in we start to find out that there might be something else going on there yeah and and there was also that part in the poll where you know she she just i i guess she had like some sort of vision or nightmare while she was in the pool and then she wakes Mm -hmm. up surrounded by people and Mm -hmm. I guess she drowned or she passed out so I do think there may be some sort of um health issue there that you know I I don't think you're wrong I think they were hinting that there is something um going on there but um they never really confirm it and maybe it's sort of like a a thing where she's having premonitions almost because most of them were related to water and Mm -hmm. um her so the thing that she finds out at the end is that her son Mm -hmm. drowned at the beach um and i guess like i kind of i don't know like i because I get the water nightmares and stuff like that, but then I didn't get the spider nightmares. Well, um, the spider nightmares were re- were related to the the god Anansi. So that's what, and that's what the little girl keeps saying. Anansi said this, Anansi said that. So on one hand, yes, I think the film is trying to convince us that she could be schizophrenic. But I think on the other hand, the film is also trying to suggest that there's a supernatural element to it because Anansi is this spider, this spider god or spider trickster or whatever, but they keep telling you that Anansi is a survivor. And the, when the, there's a scene that happens where this um, Aisha, she almost murders the little girl that she's watching um, through while she's having one of her hallucinations. And when she talks to the girl, the girl actually says um, Aisha's son's name um, out loud. And I don't think Aisha ever told this, this kid that she had a son. 
so in that sense, it seems like there is something supernatural going on because she says that he's jealous and he says that it's your fault and Anansi's the one that told you to do it. So it's almost kind of like the stun kind of um, either became Anansi or was channeling his anger or rage through Anansi and that was why this woman was getting these like this like suffering. But the fact is that, like you said, it was visions of like water and drowning and we find out at the end like you said her her son drowned so it's almost as if like her son was either torturing her or like screaming at her that this is what happened to him and you know because he she at some point in the film she can't reach the guardian anymore she keeps going to messages and so and we find out later that he'd he'd been drowned for a while this woman didn't tell her for a long time so I'd be curious if on a rewatch, if those dreams and premonitions or whatever they are, if they started around the time that you could Im- infer that her son died. I think they did because at some point, um, Marilu doesn't respond anymore and then they don't get, the. they only had that video chat one time at the beginning and then mm-hmm. the nightmares start. I mean, there were nightmares before. Um, but they started to become about water afterwards. I think I did notice that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it's really interesting that, uh, it's just such a simple kind of story, you know, where it is like, I just can't get over the fact that nothing really happens in the yeah. movie. Nothing happens. The movie, literally nothing happens. <laughs> And it's not even, like, very much, you know, I, I know I mentioned character film, but I don't even think it's really a character film either because I don't really particularly think that the characters were all that specifically interesting. I think they were kind of elevated uh, mm-hmm. from, your you know, and how a typical real-life person would be. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't really think that you know, there was any story being driven by characters that were just observing a bunch of characters that were very interesting. But somehow, like, the things that were happening were sort of interesting, like, just the day-to-day life of, you know, being a nanny and having conversations with people, the very, you know, common thing happening of you know, not getting paid on time and having to deal with your employers you know private employers dealing with that stuff and um mm. that as soon as she gave her she, she shared her food with with um rose the little girl i was like wait can she eat that because the mom kind of came off as a very like micromanaging yeah. kind of person and i feel like she probably wouldn't like that maybe um, the girl could be allergic to stuff, and we don't know what her allergy situation is. So right, but we and we find out at the later on in the movie near the end that that actually causes a problem where they get into an argument because of that. Yeah. And then Aisha is like, "Well, what am I supposed to feed her? You don't actually have anything." Yeah. <laughs> I did want to ask you what you thought about the dad's character. So yeah, so I understand why the dad is there. Because the dad is there to represent um, Aisha's own um, situation with the person that is her son's father. So at one at some point they're in a salon and they're talking about being in Senegal and how um, the the father of her child has had is the father of many children with many different women and. She, we end up finding out that it's never explicitly said, but it is heavily implied that Rose's um, father and the, um, um, Amy's husband is cheating, is cheating on, on Amy. Um, when they're out uh, in the town or when they're out at a cafe getting food, this woman comes up and is like way, way friendly um, with him. And then we also have a moment when he actually tries to, he actually kisses Aisha 
when she like hugs him for like helping her out and giving him the money and then he kind of does a not so subtle threat about like hey don't say this to my wife or anything even amy she's like asking hey can you keep an eye on my husband and she's like all frantic and everything else like that so it almost feels like she's kind of aware there's these moments when she comes in the house and she says hey um why are you still here he was supposed to relieve you and he's just like he's not here I don't know what to tell you. And the implication is that he's not there because he's out with another woman. So I think he exists as a kind of parallel to the fact that her own, um, like boyfriend, ex, ex boyfriend or whatever was kind of similar where he was just cheating on her and doing all these things and to try to, I guess, um, kind of put her in a similar vein as, as Amy, but, and where she can kind of understand like, cause Amy's also trying to, work hard and do all these things and everything else like that. But Amy isn't making the time for her child. And the sad, and the sad conclusion to all of it is, is that Amy has a child that's healthy and fine and it's not making the time and it's still working hard, but she's working so hard, but not actually spending time with her, with her child to the point where her child almost seems like she prefers Aisha as her mother. But then Aisha, who's doing all this hard work to try and bring her child home so that she can spend time with her child doesn't get to have that in the end which i think is kind of sad yeah i definitely i agree uh that's a good uh, observation about the husband um i definitely felt that it was kind of hard to watch with you know rose not you know wanting to uh, or being you know inclined to go to her mom but she she's mm-hmm. very attached to aisha which you know makes sense i think that is a common thing i've definitely seen that at least in other nanny movies where um they just become attached to the nanny because the nanny is kind of the one that's bringing them up um so that yeah it's kind of sad but and i feel bad for you know the mom too because uh i think in a lot of cases it's not like they you know um didn't want to be there it's just kind of like they just couldn't be there because of work but uh, when you have both uh, parents kind of being absent so <laughs> yeah exactly and i think that there's a couple of things that i want to get the movie praise on and then one thing that i want to bring up as a kind of critique um, of the film um, that i wasn't as big a fan of but i think that this movie is like one of like the prettiest films i've seen in a while like the way that it's shot the colors that are in the production design for different sets like they just it just pops and then there are a lot of times when we have like these lens flares that go into the camera um where almost kind of blows everything out but it's kind of adds a nice quality to the film like there are multiple scenes in this movie that are just beautiful to look at like it is this movie is very very pretty and it i guess it kind of helps because like we said like there's not that much happening story-wise in the film um or there's a lot of implied story but not that much that's explicitly said and i think that what helps to carry the film are are the the way the or excuse me is the way the film is shot and also the acting. The acting is very strong. I think that the chemistry between Aisha and uh, Malik is very good. And both those actors do a very good job in their scenes when they're together and when they're apart. But like, I think the actor they got to play Malik is very charming. And like hearing him make jokes or talk to Aisha, like he actually had me smiling. While I didn't even realize I'm just sitting there watching a scene of them talking and I'm smiling because it's a charming scene and I like their interaction. So you have you have things like that. And then even the scenes with um, with Amy and Aisha are also interesting. And seeing these moments when Amy, excuse me, when Aisha is like, you're wondering if she's going to snap on Rose because you have Rose like running around and like screaming and stuff like that. And then you have the sound design starting to like kind of ring out and you just hear this like kind of repeating screaming of this little girl as we zoom in on this character. And we're like, oh my gosh, is this girl, is this woman about to kill this child? And so like, it's like things like that are just very well done. So I think from a technical aspect and a performance aspect, that is another thing that I have to give the movie praise for. Yeah, I agree. I thought 
that uh, the I particularly like the lighting. I did have a little bit of problem with um, maybe the mermaid look kind of weird <laughs> sometimes, but I figured it's probably not yet, like a billion dollar film, so mm. that's fine. Um, there are also a couple of weird shots where I wasn't sure what I was looking at. Um, like when they were, when she was talking to her friend Sally, I think outside, you know, yep, what I'm talking was, about. Because yeah, I, I rewound it. I rewound it to see. I was like, did I miss something? Yeah, they me cut, too. They cut to a shot of just like, because they're talking outside the salon, right? And then they cut to the shot of the people just like walking. You're like, what am I supposed to be looking at? Exactly. Um, and then also, I, I kind of feel a little bit let down by the ending. Um, okay. Go you, beat, you beat me to it. You beat me to it. That was good. That was going to be my critique. That was going to be my my one negative critique about the movie. But you 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 started it. Let's let's hear it. Yeah. So how it ends is you know after she finds out that her son dies, um, she goes to like the pier and I think she tries to commit suicide and I thought that's how it was going to end. She's got a, like a moment with the mermaid and the mermaid's bringing her back up to the surface and then you see her you know back up but they, they pull her out she's on the pier again and then there's like a montage shots of her with a baby and it kind of makes it seem like she had a, like a whole journey relationship with uh, Malik and had another baby and they're like a family now but also she's like crying in the bathtub <laughs> so I'm not really sure if like that was a dream because she's had many a dream or right. you know I don't really know how I'm supposed to interpret that little bit because it's literally like it's not even just the montage it's literally a couple of shots yeah it's like maybe four shots of this happening like back to back for like a few seconds all of them mm -hmm. and i'm just like what and that's how it ends and like yeah i almost feel like if they didn't put that i would have liked the movie a lot more yeah so i think for me when i i got to a point in the movie where there was only 10 minutes left and i literally said this movie feels like it needs like another like 20 25 minutes to wrap everything up i have no idea how this movie is going to end and when we get to that point where, like you said, where we start seeing the shots and then together and everything else like that, to me, it felt like the movie was rushing to be finished. Like, they they said, hey, we ran out of budget. We got to end this. So this is what we got to do for our ending. Because, and I get, I can understand it to a point, but there's also just so many just loose threads that story-wise, we just don't really get to see any kind of con conclusion, uh, conclusion of. Um, so like, cause you have like the whole stuff with the mom, Amy, like she leaves that one night and we never see her again. That's, that's the last time we see her in the film. The, the father, we see him say bye to his daughter, uh, one time during the day and then that's it. And then he's gone for the rest of the film and we don't, we don't really get to see the conclusion of that story. When Rose's last line is sitting in the bed saying, Anansi made you do it, um, because they said it was my fault and she rolls over and that's it. And then she's out of the movie for the rest of the film. So there's... My biggest issue is just that, like, it's not so much that the movie, um, it's, it's more so that this movie's ending doesn't feel like it's given enough time to actually be an ending. It feels more like it cuts off. It cuts off at the end. And so that's kind of like my biggest issue is just because you, when, you, when you bring these kind of story elements into, when you show us these different story elements and beats that are within the film, we want to see some type of conclusion with it and that doesn't necessarily mean that we gotta have to we have to see amy have it out with her husband and be like i know that you're cheating or anything else like that but i feel like since that story is a part of this larger story you want to see some of these elements concluded or find out like so did she stop working with them did she leave rose behind like uh, did she keep working with them like it's just things like that so and i can understand that maybe that's not something that everybody wanted but I will say that for me personally, it left me wanting. I mean, 
Okay, I can kind of see how that bothers you that we don't really know what happens to that family and they were sort of a big part of the movie because they were in it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I kind of, like if, you know, we're kind of thinking about them as a sort of parallel to her life and like yeah. almost like a commentary on, um, mm-hmm. you know, how you know they're they're not really taking care of rose and she is she's taking very good care of rose but in turn she's not taking care of her son i think that i'm okay with leaving it at that as them just being there as a parallel but i guess i could see how you know it's sort of um jarring to not you know know like how do they react what's what you know do they learn anything you know how does that resolve um but I think I was so distracted by that, you know, montage being so <laughs> weird that, I mean, I don't even know how what I would have wanted to see from that family. Um, but I I don't know. I was just pretty thrown off by that montage. <laughs> and you yeah. know, I don't really like montages either. Oh, yeah. And you brought up something I didn't even think about, about like when, because I, when I saw that last shot in the bathtub, uh, where her clothed up in the bathtub, like my brain was just telling me, that oh this is the this is just her later on after she's had this kid because she doesn't look pregnant anymore and everything else like that and so she has like this kid now with this guy and everything but it also is the same shot that we saw at some other point in the film it's like the exact same shot top down her in the bathtub so then i'm like okay well so is everything that we saw up until this point basically an imagination or a dream or whatever or a fantasy or and that's why we're seeing her in the bathtub in the same exact shot and angle that we saw at some other point in the film um but the last little thing that i kind of felt weird about was like and i i don't know maybe this is just me but you know i get it she lost a kid and i guess the movie is kind of like trying to give a semi happy ending or it depends i guess how you look at it um if it's real or if it's imagine if it's her imagination or if she's dead or if she's alive but if it's real and it's like oh she had another kid and now she's happy that still kind of that felt weird to me because it's almost like she replaced her other kid yeah, that's how i felt i was like wait does she just have a new baby and now she's just happy with this new family and everything because like no but like the whole thing is that she like cared so much like it was all about her son that's mm-hmm. all she cared about and like she, everything that she was doing in this movie was for him and then she loses him and we don't even get to hang on to that you know loss yeah and so like ha- like seeing her with a new baby and a new family like it would have been different if we were seeing like a montage of like her memories of him of and, the kid. And, yeah. and those are like you know like lights out they're disappearing because she's also dying like that even would have been a cooler ending mm-hmm. but um like i just kind of felt like i didn't have a moment to like let her grieve and see her go through that you know emotion and it and it's not even like I'm not gonna pretend like I know what it feels like to lose a child, but I feel like those who lose a child and like you know even though they have another child and everything, like there's always gonna be a part of them that is gonna grieve for that loss, right? And yeah. I don't even know if I would like to see that you know she's representing that loss with happiness, mm-hmm. you know, like. I like there's just something there that I feel like it's it kind of just got swept under the rug and I feel like I don't particularly appreciate that because I don't feel like you know people that have experienced that would have appreciated that either yeah so I think for me at the end of the day like for this ending it just felt like all of a sudden because this movie is kind of like paced kind of methodically and it feels like at the end we hit the fast forward button yeah. And that to me was like the most jarring experience of the movie. Like literally I loved everything else about the film until the ending. So that's why I wanted to make sure I said how much I loved everything else that we talked about today. Um, because I knew that we would get to the ending and it's going to be like, yeah, this is my biggest problem with the film and keeps it from being like an absolutely amazing movie. But is there anything else that you kind of wanted to get out of your, ch- uh, get out of your, get off your chest about like how you felt about this film that we didn't get to mention uh nope that was it for me okay 
But yeah, so that's what we thought about Manny, everybody. Have you seen it? What do you think about it? Did, did we miss something with the ending in some type of way that we could interpret it? Because that's very well possible that we missed the uh, kind of interpretation that the director wanted. Also, kind of great that this was the director's first debut. That's what we said in our chat. So for a first directorial movie, absolutely great. Even if with the problems with the ending aside, absolutely great. But have you guys seen it? What would you think about it? What have you thought about it? Comment below. Let us know. And while you're down there, if you give us a like, share, and subscribe, even if you don't, though, I have been Chris, and this has been Cheryl, and they say when you love someone, they live forever. Every day. You're gonna be okay? I wish I knew what's happening to me.